I mean, you could not come up with a better character for the creator of Strand Beast. It's just not possible. I knew uh, about the Strand Beast the same way that most people find out about Strand Beast through the internet and seeing clips. Um, but then I read a little bit more about it and the idea itself was so extraordinary and fascinating that I decided on my next trip to Holland, I'm going to drop by and see what it's all about. I think the first time I saw it may have been in the early 2000s. I saw some of the leg parts in a previous animal, Animaris Ordis, that was sort of uh, still there and in working condition. And Theo showed me how they walk, how they try to breathe, how they stumble. It's very hard to describe enchantment. It's a recognition. You can articulate all sorts of things about Strandbees, about any kind of work of art that stays with you. But ultimately, it's really a mystery. It's a riddle. In my previous work, I delved into sort of a darker side of wonder, sort of cabinets of wonder and curiosities, the wonder common, where I concentrated on anatomical anomalies. And here were these skeletons that were not perfect, but they thrived in the realm of imperfection. Everything about them seemed optimistic. And so I thought, oh, that's just great, perfect. I set out to make one image at a time. And then they seem to make sense, or they don't. And in this case, they seemed to make sense. And also, like Strandbees, they became many things at once. It became a family album of Strandbees. But then it ended up being a very specific exploration into the question of what is the day-to-day um, -day life of an artist. Seeing Theo work on the beach, day-to-day, -day, calmly fail, all the time, pick himself up, pick the strong beast up, and uh, go back to it, I thought, well, that's a very good idea to look at it as a day-to-day -day routine. I think it is paramount that the strong beast start at an art museum, because although they're an engineering accomplishment, above all, they're an artistic accomplishment. At the moment, there's such a resurgence of interest in cabinets of wonder and curiosities. And I think in part, it has to do with the fact that there's an acute um, deficit of enchantment. And so we are looking back in time when people just produced the work and produced the collections without separating the poetry and the reason. So perfectly, they start at PEM and then they end up with Exploratorium, just as comfortably, because strand beasts exist in these worlds very comfortably and very well.